Coaching a football team is one very complex task, and that's because you have to keep finding various ways to make your team win. Most times we only get to see coaches do their jobs during games, but there's just so many other things that we don't see. Take for example, training sessions. And what the coach does during these training sessions is probably more important than what he does during games. During training sessions, most managers tend to employ regular training methods to keep their players fit. However, there is another group of managers who prefer a much more rigorous style of training. In this video, we'll be talking about some of these managers. So sit back and relax as we bring to you five managers with the most intense training sessions. Number one, Antonio Conte. Surely he's the first name you would have expected on this list. We all know Conte for his antics on the touchline. He's by far one of the most energetic managers in world football. And it turns out he enjoys making his players feel the same way. Perhaps that's why his training sessions are just so intense. No kidding. Just recently, players of Spurs were spotted after a training session and they looked absolutely exhausted. And you know what's more surprising? Many of these players have played under coaches like Mourinho and Pochettino, but they had never experienced anything like that. And even the very athletic Harry Kane had to throw up after one of the sessions. This isn't the first time Conte would be doing this though. Chiellini once said that his training sessions used to leave players feeling dead. Haha, <laughs> good thing it's just a feeling. Well, you really can't blame Conte for sticking with these methods, can you? They seem to be working quite well for him. After all, he is in fact a league winner in multiple countries. And perhaps these methods may work once again, this time with Spurs, and he may just become the one to finally end their trophy drought. Number 2. Marcelo Bielsa His inclusion is definitely no fluke. We mean, when this man was the coach of Leeds, his training method was so intense that it was nicknamed the Murder Ball. Yeah, you heard that right. Hey, <laughs> okay, we don't think anybody actually got harmed during the training methods. But the point is, you can imagine just how intense the training method must be for his players to give it such a destructive name. Well, if you're still in doubt about what the Murder Ball was about, then this one's for you. You see, just like regular training drills, the murder ball involved dividing players into two different teams. Only that, in this case, there were actually no stoppages in play. Pretty surprising, right? That means no throw-ins, free kicks, and so on. The players basically had to keep going on and on with no chance to even catch a breather. Well, some of his players have actually complained about his methods in the past, and even new Leeds coach Jesse Marsh complained that the team was overtrained by Bielsa, and this made them prone to injuries. But would all of these complaints make Bielsa change his methods? Nah, we don't think so. Number 3. Diego Simeone You've already heard about the murder ball for Bielsa, now for Simeone, we bring to you the Murder Hill. And if you're wondering what the Murder Hill is, well, it's a high-intensity fitness training used by Simeone for his Atletico Madrid team this summer. <laughs> Again, just like in the case of Bielsa, we don't think anybody actually got harmed by the Murder Hill. But from the looks of the players after those sessions, their muscles must have been quite hurt. If you're currently thinking that that was the first time Simeone would subject his players through such drills, then you couldn't be more wrong. In the summer of 2016, Bernard Mensah had just signed for Atletico, and he turned up for his first training session. And well, he probably thought it was going to be just another session like the ones he was used to. But what happened that day is something that he will never forget. That's because on that day, he ended up throwing up during training because it was just too intense for him. Perhaps that event was the reason he left the club on many loan spells and eventually left the club without playing a game for the club. You really can't blame him for wanting to get away, can ya? Number 4. Jurgen Klopp Simeone and Conte aren't the only coaches who have made players throw up with their training methods. It turns out the same thing happened to some players of Liverpool when Klopp first arrived at the club. Liverpool are currently known for playing a fast, high-intensity style of football, and if you think their football's intense, then perhaps you should wait till you see how hard they're made to train. And believe it or not, he didn't just start this style in Liverpool. His sessions have always been this intense, even when he was a coach at Dortmund. And just so you know how intense some of these sessions were, there have been rumours that on some days, many of these players would stay over at hotels. No, not because they finished too late to go home or anything like that. The reason they had to sleep over at hotels was because they were too tired to even go home. If Klopp could make actual sport professionals this tired, then imagine how regular people like us would feel if we were at such sessions. 
Well, we don't know about you, but we sure wouldn't want to be at any one of those sessions. Number 5. Eric Ten Hag Before he was appointed as Manchester United's coach, the club was struggling with so many things. It wasn't just about the fact that they weren't winning games or trophies, no. The players were also seen to lack the level of passion and urgency you would normally expect from players of the club. So, when they appointed Ten Hag as their coach, these were some of the things he was tasked with changing. And, well, if his training routines are anything to go by, then he's already on his way to doing so. You see, one of the first things he changed about the club was the time of training. Unlike under former coach Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, trainings at the club now start by exactly 9am. This is very similar to how things were under Alex Ferguson, and that's even the least of the changes, and here's where it gets more intense. He didn't just make trainings earlier, he also increased the number of training sessions for the players. Now they do as much as three sessions in a single day. That's not even where it ends for them. You see, three regular sessions in a day could still be a lot bearable for players. But in the case of Man United, they're actually made to do very intense sessions. To make things worse, the players are also made to do push-ups when they concede a goal in training. Surely, this is very intense, even for fit athletes. And some of the players have admitted it already. Well, if they're made to do push-ups for conceding goals in training, then you can imagine what it'd do to them when they concede goals in Premier League games. Well, we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed and wait and see if this will translate to success for Man United. But what do you think? Do you support such intense sessions? Are there any other coaches who employ similar methods? Do let us know in the comments section. Give this video a thumbs up as well if you enjoyed it, and for more cool videos like this one, do hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for this channel. We'll catch you next time. Bye!